Welcome to the October 28, 2020 special board meeting of the Chino Valley Fire District Board of Directors. The time is 6 p.m. This is President Harvey Luce and we will now begin the meeting. Please be advised that this meeting will be recorded. Please silence your cell phones and devices to reduce background noise or disruption. In accordance with the California Governor's Executive Order N-29-20, guidance from the California Department of Public Health and in an effort to combat the spread of COVID-19, the, the Chino Valley Fire District will hold all regular and special meetings of the Board of Directors remotely in a hybrid format Matt, until further notice. Board members may be present in the boardroom and will accommodate physical attendance by the public. The public may join the meeting real-time in listen-only mode. Instructions and the GoToWebinar URL link for the meeting are listed on the agenda. Our agenda is posted on our website at cbifd.org. Please be advised that when you join the meeting real-time, your screen name will appear on the GoToWebinar screen. The board will accept public comment on all items on the agenda. Instructions for participating in public comment were listed on the agenda and on the fire district website. The public had three options for participating in public comment. One option for participating in public comment was to submit comments to the clerk of the board at email, by email at clerk at showfire.org prior to the beginning of the meeting. Comments received by email will be read real time by the clerk of the board during the specified time. Emails are limited to 300 words. Please note that your name will be read into the record. The second option for participating in public comment real time was to register prior to the meeting at the GoToWebinar URL listed on this agenda. If you have registered for public comment, the clerk of the board will call on you and unmute your microphone when it's your turn to speak. Attendees may also need to unmute their own devices to be heard. The third option is for the public to attend the meeting and submit a request to speak form to the clerk of the board or to me. When your name is called, begin the public comment by stating your name and address, which is optional for the record. Comments must be limited to five minutes. For a recorded viewing of the board meeting, you may access the fire district website the day following the meeting at cbifd.org and click on video archive. I will now open the meeting and take roll call. Please answer when I call your name. Director Williams. Here. Director Krieger. Here. Director DeMonico. Present. Vice President Ronald Sillinger. Present. And myself, President Lou. I'd like to remind everyone joining remotely to please mute your phone until it's your time to speak to cut down on any background noise. And now, if you will please join me in the flag salute. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. 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 Thank you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that you are the God of the universe, the Almighty. We thank you for this day. We thank you for every uh, one that is here today. And I want to uh, pray, God, that you bless everyone in present, all the members of this uh, board, all leaders. And I pray, Father, for a successful meeting. I pray, Lord, that you will um, conduct, uh, direct the direction of this meeting, that everything will be done according to plan, and that things will be accomplished, uh, plans uh, will be uh, done, and everything will be according to what is needed for the city, for the people of the city, Lord. And we just ask you to be with the uh, firefighters uh, fighting the fires, that you will be with them, that you protect, watch over them, keep them safe, Lord, that no lives will be lost with all these uh, horrible fires. We thank you for your grace and for your mercy, and it's in your precious name that we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Chaplain Estrada. You're welcome. Thank you. Public communications. This is time and place for the general public to address the board of directors about subjects that do not appear elsewhere on the agenda. The public may address items on the agenda at the time addressed by the board. Through the board policy and Brown Act requirements, action may not be taken on any issue not on the agenda. When you address the board, please take your name and address, which is optional, prior to making your remarks. Please limit your comments to five minutes. Sir, the board, do we have any requests to speak? We have no requests to speak. Thank you. Next, we have old business none. 
We'll move into new business item number one, community power resiliency allocation for special districts grant program. The purpose is to review and discuss a Cal OES grant opportunity for the community power resiliency allocation to special districts grant program. Finance Director Steve Heidi, please present your report. President Luth, members of the board, good evening. On October 9, Cal OES announced the solicitation of grant proposals for the community power resiliency allocation to special districts program. Um, this was a short notice a solicitation on behalf of OES. We have until uh, this Friday, October 30, to submit an application. CSDA uh, has been actively promoting amongst California special districts uh, to apply for this uh, short notice funding. And additional information regarding eligibility for the grant program is included in your staff report. Uh, California special districts that haven't identified a critical facility or facilities or provide cr critical infrastructure uh, are eligible to apply for this grant. So in order to submit a grant application, the fire chief would need to be authorized to sign related grant application documents on behalf of the district and the board president would need to be authorized to sign certain grant documents as well, evidencing the authority of the fire chief as the authorized grant application signer on behalf of the district. The Cal OES, Cal OES request for proposal for this grant was included as an attachment uh, to the staff report. With that, I'll read the recommendation. It's recommended that the board review, discuss, and approve authorization of the fire chief to sign grant application documents for the Community Power Resiliency Allocation to Special Districts grant program on behalf of the district and the board president be authorized to sign certain grant documents evidencing the authority of the fire chief as the authorized grant application signer on behalf of the district. That concludes my report. Thank you. Clerk of the board, do we have Hello? any questions? Hello? Yeah, we have no um, public comments. Um, Chaplain Estrada, can we ask you to please mute your phone at this time? Okay. Thank Sorry you. about that. Thank you. All right. This is the time for the board to comment. Director Williams. I have no comment. All right. Director Krieger. I'm sorry. What exactly is the grant for? Uh, the, the, in this case, uh, we're proposing that we would apply for a generator replacement for station two with a low emissions unit, which we believe would qualify under the grant program. How much dollars? Uh, I believe that's still in uh, in, in review, but I think it's somewhere around 50,000. Yeah, historically, yeah. we replaced the, a couple years ago, the board authorized, I believe it was two years ago, yeah. replacement of station 66. I would imagine it's in that same general dollar range. And I believe last year we replaced station 64. And typically it's about $50,000 depending on the specifications. Cool. That's it. Okay. Uh, Director DeMonaco. Yeah, a, a couple of questions. Uh, specifically, you said which station number? Station 62. Two. And uh, could, could this be used for more than one building? Could we apply for a grant for like the Carter building as well? Uh, I don't believe that that would qualify as critical infrastructure that has been discussed, but then, uh, most likely not eligible. How about renewable energy? Would it be available for any of that? Any solar or uh, battery backup, Tesla batteries? That, uh, I'm unclear on that. Things would need that be eligible or is available through this? And we want to take a look at that as well, not just a generator replacement. Uh, I think the, uh, I guess we're going to try to utilize the, the full grant if we were able to get it. The, the, uh, so I became aware of the grant through CSDA. They pushed out some information, uh, and it was a short window of time. I engaged uh, Deputy Chief Atkinson because he oversees facilities. If we had any facilities that we were anticipating replacing the generators going forward, where this might qualify. I don't think, and I, it, it's been a while since I went through the packet, I don't think solar was specifically available. Um, it was The intent of this is to address power outages related to the public safety power shutoff. So there are some parameters, but we can evaluate a little further. Unfortunately, the, the window of opportunity is pretty brief for this. That's why we had to include this uh, in the agenda. We have to submit the application by Friday of this week. So there's not a lot of time for us to look at alternate options. 
uh, and with the commitment of staff with the fire activity still, I don't know that we'll have a huge opportunity to do that, but um, I think there's there may be opportunities going forward for other facilities. And if we do look to budget for Carter, that may present an opportunity at that point to look at other options uh, besides just the typical uh, electrical generator. Yeah, and I'm specifically looking at this, uh, hoping that maybe we can maximize our application for the benefit or, or the grant and, uh, and, and do as much as we can for the district through the grant if we were uh, fortunate enough to even get the grant. So, uh, and, and that's where my direction was. I, I want to maximize our application, if at all possible. And, and I do realize it's a short window, and, and I do realize the crunch, and, and I appreciate all the hard work that everybody's done, but... Uh, we don't get these that often either. I'm done. All right, Vice President Ronald Sevinger. Yes, I have no comments. Any comments? I don't have any comments today other than I appreciate the, the time they bringing this up and the effort to try and apply for anything that uh, that uh, we may have opportunity for. I would encourage us to look at this. Director DeMonaco mentioned if there's other opportunities. Again, recognizing staff is extremely busy right now. So. All right. At this time, I'd like to request a motion. Please state your name before your motion. Uh, Sean Bonico, motion to approve. There you go. Okay. Second. All right. I have a motion by Director Monaco, a second by Vice President Ramos Avenger. I will now call for a roll call voice vote. Mm -hmm. Director Williams. I vote yes. Director Krieger. Yes. Director Monaco. Yes. Vice President Ramos Avenger. Yes. And myself, President Luke. Yes. Item carries 5-0. Adjourn to closed session. Before I adjourn to the open session, to closed session portion of the meeting, I will read the two closed session items. Conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation. Consider initiation of litigation pursuant to paragraph four of subdivision D of section 54956.9, one potential case. And conference with real property negotiator pursuant to government code section 54956.8, the board of directors will meet with a designated negotiator. Fire Chief Tim Shackelford regarding real property owned by the city of Chino Hills and located on an undeveloped parcel located on the south side of Soco Canyon at the intersection of Soco Canyon and Pipeline Avenue. The Board of Directors will instruct the direct district's negotiators concerning the price and terms of payment. Clerk of the Board, do we have any public comments on the closed session items? We have no public comment on the closed session items. Thank you. I will now adjourn the open session to closed session. Staff members and the public who are not participating in closed session are now asked to leave the media room. Welcome back to the October 28, 2020 special board meeting of the Chino Valley District Board of Directors. The time is 7.01 p.m. I will now reopen the meeting and take roll call. Please answer when I call your name. Director Williams. Here. Director Krieger. Here. Director DeMonico. Present. Vice President Ronald Sevinger. Present. And President Booth here. Legal counsel Isaac Rosen, please report out of closed session. Thank you, Board President Luth. With respect to uh, the, board, uh, the closed session item conference with legal counsel anticipated litigation, under paragraph four of subdivision D of section 54956.9, there is no reportable action. With respect to the closed session item conference with real property negotiators pursuant to government code section 54956.8, the board by a five to zero vote has uh, approved an announcement out of closed session. That announcement is that the district has approved the terms contained within a letter of intent for a property transfer and public facility development impact fee payment agreement with the city of Chino Hills regarding the uh, construction and equipment of a fire station 68 um, with direction to bring back an open session, a agreement uh, with the city of Chino Hills on the aforementioned fire station to be considered and for possible approval in open session by the district board. Thank you. This is time for board comments. Director Williams. Uh, thank you. I just uh, have no comments other than to say that uh, all the fires we've had in our surrounding area is very concerning. Um, I uh, 
really am concerned about our firefighters. And uh, I did have a chance to go down Highway 71 today and the area that was blackened was uh, quite uh, a bit and it was concerning. And uh, hopefully uh, everything is going to work out okay. Uh, it seems like it is. And uh, so that, that's really all I, I want to say is, you know, I think the guys are doing a great job and uh, I hope everything works out for them. All right. Director Krieger. Uh, first off, I'm very excited about um, the announcement out of closed session. Um, I think it's a fantastic achievement uh, that us in the city of Chino Hills are uh, working towards. So uh, very excited about that. Regarding um, the fire uh, over the last two days, couldn't be more proud of this department. Uh, I really, you know, I, I know we talk about our guys on the ground, boots on the ground, uh, on the floor that are out there working all the time, but I really want to commend our, um, our chief officers, um, obviously Chief Shackelford, the battalion chiefs, and the deputy chiefs who work tirelessly um, upwards of 40 hours uh, without a break. Uh, to stay out there to make sure that things were taken care of, to direct the proper resources. I'm glad you guys got uh, just under four hours of sleep for you and just five hours of sleep for you, Dave. So very, I, I hope you guys were able to relax a little bit uh, throughout the rest of the, of the week. But very proud uh, to be affiliated with this department, um, especially seeing how 14,000 acres burned and in our area, we had zero property damage, uh, no houses lost, and nobody got hurt, uh, which are the two things that you kind of judge these incidents by. So um, very, very good job, well done, and I hope you convey that to, to everybody uh, along the way. Thank you. Director DeMonico. I'd like to concur with uh, Director Krieger's comments and, and start with the fire station. It's taken a long time to get here. and. Uh, I'm glad we're at this point and hopefully we can bring this to conclusion and, and move forward and build that fire station, which incidentally is right in the middle of a lot of where the activity was over the last couple of days. But kudos to our firefighters and all firefighters. They did a tremendous job out there, our, our staff, our chief officers. Uh, that was a disaster in the making. Uh, that could have been, been hor ex extremely horrible. And, and other areas have experienced that. But when those winds were blowing yesterday morning, uh, I, 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 I have not experienced winds like that in Chino Hills since I moved here back in 1992. These are the worst winds I've ever seen. And when they came through, they were really ferocious. And uh, you know, it just takes a lot to get out there and, and, and attack those fires and do the things that are necessary to pr protect lives and property. And, our guys did, our firefighters did, and I also want to come in and thank the police department. I believe Chino Hills Police Department called in a number of, uh, a whole lot of officers. They know we did. I mean, we had mandatory evacuations. When's the last time we had a mandatory evacuation in Chino Hills? It's been a long time. Even if the freeway fire uh, back in 08, we had evacuations, but not near to this extent. So just what a tremendous job, and I want to commend everybody and thank everybody. I'm just so thankful they're safe that we very well get through this and, and not have anybody injured or hurt for both our folks and civilians. So thank you so much. Vice President Ronald Sevinger. Okay, and um, I'm probably going to comment about the same thing, guys, but absolutely thrilled about the partnership we finally um, com somewhat completed with the city of Chino Hills. I'm just very, very pleased about extremely um, happy about that. And with the fires, thank you, Chief. Thank you, everybody, all the hard work. Um, it, it, it takes a village, and we had Beyond the Village. And thank you, Chief, early on, and, and staff and everyone for uh, making sure that the, the resources that were necessary were you know, called upon early on. I know that the um, residents in um, Sleepy Hollow area, that Dell Task Force you know, over there, you know, gave security to them somewhat. Um, I still have concerns about the residents who did not evacuate, who refused to evacuate. That truly concerns me. I know that, you know, it's a choice, but our properties are never more important than our lives. And um, 
I'm just very, very grateful that this turned out right, that we were very fortunate this time and we didn't have loss of life. But that still, that I wish there was a way that we could really, you know, just <coughs> work with our residents and make sure that they understand that the importance of leaving when we ask them to leave and not when it's too late and it's, you know, in that position. But thank you guys. Thank you, everyone. It was, you know, just, just great. And, and they, I want to thank God for his mercies because um, he really came out on the great end of it. And I'm very pleased. I do want to comment about the two um, firefighters that were injured in the Silverado fire. And I asked if everyone please continue to pray for those gentlemen. One of the young men is a local boy here. And so I just really ask that we just hold them um, in prayer and hold their parents in, in prayer. And um, yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, I would concur with what's already been stated. It's very exciting that we've gotten this to this point on Station 68. Isaac, thank you for all your diligent efforts and Chief Peters as well. And um, and also on the, on the fire, the, the effort, it, yeah, it, uh, it makes you very proud to be a part or to be associated in any way with this, this district when you see what the response was. Um, the relationships, again, we have with our other agencies that surround us with Chino Hills Police in this particular situation and that their, their support and their help and all the other agencies and whoever else was involved in helping and assisting in any way and being able to call on them and, and get that help. Um, it's just, what a tremendous effort. Thank why well, no one's hurt, everybody's yeah. safe, as far as we know at this point. It, yeah. And we had as good an outcome as we could have hoped for given the severity of the situation. So thank you to everyone for the long hours, scary, it had to be scary nights and scary days, yeah, just getting into that situation. So thank you everyone for, for the efforts uh, to, to protect our communities. With that, we're going to adjourn. The next regular meeting originally scheduled for November 11, 2020 will be canceled due to a conflict with the Veterans Day holiday. A special board meeting will be held on Wednesday, November 18, 2020 at 6 p.m. at the District Training Center located at 5092 Schaefer Avenue, Chino, California, 91710. We are adjourned. And, uh,